Welcome to Me B League. It's our ninth show of the season. Hey, what's up, everyone? What's happening? This is Keita, your host for Me B League. Spring is just around the corner here in Japan. Okay, let's start off from the great performance of B League players playing in the FIBA World Cup 2023 qualifier that we mentioned in the last show. First off, Europe qualifier. And this must be the biggest surprise of the qualifier. Murphy Brothers, playing for the Finland national team, defeated world rank number four, Slovenia national team. That must be a huge win. Congrats! I can only imagine, but fans who watched the game went crazy on this one. Next, Asia qualifier. We have another big news. First, The Japanese national team defeated the Chinese Taipei. It was a historical first victory for the new head coach Tom Harvest. Congrats, guys! <laughs> Solid performance from new member Nishida of Mikawa Seahorse was one of the hot topics. And I am excited to see those young players get minutes. And lastly, the Philippines national team. 30 Rabana and Dwight Ramos scored double digits on both games. In fact, Ramos went double double. Despite of the loss to New Zealand, they show some promises with their deep roster. Safe travel back, everybody! We are all looking forward to seeing you guys back in action in the B League. Next up, the regular season is getting close to the climax after bye week. These are the top plays from our Asian Call of Players last week. Let's get it! Okay, oh, he splits the defender. And what a pass! Great vision! He was a key factor for the victory after having not played for 54 days. During that play, we had the game plan to really attack the pick and rolls and see where the help is coming from and at that point Hayashi made a good cut to the baseline and I had an attack on the step up screen and forced uh, the Sun and import to help on me and Hayashi was really free so I just had to make my defender commit and as soon as the import helped Carter I just dropped it off uh, to Hayashi for an easy layup. It was a good uh, game for us also. For that game, you know, we, we were able to uh, muscle out a win, and with plays like what happened, it's important for us to continue to trust our philosophy and continue to make plays like that. Okay, fast break. The ball goes to Kiefer. Ooh, lightning quick first step. Bye bye. For this play, You know, in transition, we wanted to run me and uh, my point guard Tetsu. Uh, we talked about him bringing down the ball, and I will just be running to the corner and try to attack as as much as I can. And again, it was Rob Carter who defended me, uh, and it was really hard for him because he went outside the paint. Uh, he's a big guy, and I tried to use my speed and my quickness as an advantage and take good chances of attacking a transition break. So it was good for us to run and get easy layups. And in this play, you know, it's it's something that we could also capitalize on in the future. Uh, you're, we were a very young and quick team, so we have to make the most out of the opportunity when it comes to running the fast break. Although his brother, 30, did not play this game, Kiefer went off for 28 points and 8 assists. Unfortunately, showdown between Rabana brothers did not happen this time, but let's save the fun for another chance. By the way, there was a bunch of special merchandise sold at the venue. Look at the variety of products. And we cannot miss out on this. We just got this yesterday, and you don't need no words on this one. Dunk of the Ear nominee. 
goalkeeper has the ball. He rejects the pick and he goes up and he slams it home. One hand posterizing. Oh my goodness. How, 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 Kiefer, how? How, how in the world he's gonna slam that? He, he's only like six foot. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at the elevation, explosion, the swag. Dunk of the ear? Uh-uh, maybe play of the ear, in my opinion. Uh, well, after this, you know, I actually also surprised myself when I was able to uh, drive hard and drive uh, to the basket. I guess there was a little bit of miscommunication with uh, number zero and Josh Smith. Um, and uh, the weak side help came a little bit too late and I was able to have momentum and get, uh, get on my uh, strong side when it comes to jumping. And it was just all momentum and just wanting to play and finish the ball and finish the, uh, to the basket as hard as I can. And I was able to get up there and dunk. It's been a while since I was able to dunk in a game. And uh, as soon as the season started, I wanted to uh, dunk uh, at least once, you know. And uh, just to the surprise of a lot of people, uh, I was able to do it uh, with a defender. So it, it brought a lot of energy. I think it was able to give us energy to come back in the fourth quarter. You know, it was just a little too late, too big of a lead for Toyama, but. Then again, it was pro it's probably one of my best highlights, best plays in my career. And hopefully, you know, I can, I can uh, make more of those uh, in the future. I guess it's not enough, you know. Uh, I have to try to help the team in uh, some other ways uh, by, uh, you know, defending, getting more rebounds, and just being a leader outside. Uh, you know, uh, the last time I had 28 points and 8 assists, we still lost to San En and now against Toyama, 24 and 10 still wasn't enough. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, for me, it's really more about, you know, doing the other things to help the team win. And uh, hopefully we can continue to, uh, I can continue to play well and give us a chance to win. And if not, you know, just find other ways to help out and give ourselves a chance to win. Alright, our main topic for today is a player who is already proven himself as a leader in the championship contender, Ray, Ray Parks, Parks Jr. Jr. He is among the best Asia quarter players in the B League because he is carrying his team to the highest seed at this point. We also sat down for an exclusive interview with him. It's a must watch. His team, Nagoya Diamond Dolphins is currently fighting for the spot in the championship. Ray has started in most of the games and averaging over 11 points per game, showing some solid performance in one of the best offensive team in the league. Ray is very humble young man with very warm and cheerful character. He was one of the players who was brightening up the mood during the All-Star Online event. I remember him saying that he really missed his dog, was kind of shows that his character off the court. So we went deep in details about his life in Japan so far, what he do to keep his performances, and so on. Let's watch. Hey, what's up, Ray? Oh, I had him for about two, two and a half years right now, and his name is RJ. So basically Ray Jr. <laughs> Yeah, that, he's basically a son to me. So like, even other okay, like that's my son right there. He's my wallpaper. Yeah, love him, love him to death. Um, he's a French bulldog. I have family that's taking care of him right now. So he's there. He's the king of the household right now. As a matter of fact, he's ripping and running around and just enjoying the freedom and not being disciplined. So yeah, all I can do is watch him through a camera and just try to tell him to stop wilding out. So, yeah, he, he's feeling pretty comfortable and pretty happy. Definitely, I'll video call him every day. I video call him every day, and I just check up on him on the CCTV cameras. At oh, not at all. At the end of the day, Dwight is a man of few words, and, you know, he deserves it. At the end of the day, like, I feel like he is he's young, but he's a great leader also at the same time. So, I... Uh, Kudos to him, congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I get along with, you know, most of the people I have conversations with. 
I mean, my teammates, I love my teammates, talk to them each and every day. So that, that comes with communication skills I'm trying to learn. A uh, little bit more Japanese. I keep messing with them. I keep telling them I'll be fluent in Japanese next year. <laughs> As of right now, uh, no, but I just try to learn each and every day, try to find new words and things that I can use in my daily conversations with them. We'll have a couple of off days, but for the most part, we're in the gym, we're working out, trying to stay in shape. And, you know, it's definitely tough mid-season dealing with the uh, coronavirus and also dealing with like FIBA break. Uh, you have to keep your rhythm, your game shape, uh, game shape rhythm too. So as much as possible, we try to stay in the gym. Actually, I just try to keep it safe right now. Like I said, with everything that's going on, you don't want to put in jeopardy your team and also like family. So as much as I would want to go out and enjoy the days off, I just try to just stay productive with it. And, you know, still the most important thing is safety. So I wish everybody enjoys their break, but still continue to be safe and hold each other accountable. Actually, um, I do. I do want to check out uh, Mount Fuji because I only had a photo of it while we were on the bus coming from, I think, Tokyo, and it looks beautiful. Um, I definitely want to check out a bunch more uh, spots. I actually haven't been to Tokyo and just been around. So, because like I said, dealing with the game schedule, dealing with like the coronavirus, so it's tough really to travel, but hopefully things die down and things uh, get settled. But yeah, I know there's a lot of beautiful sites that I really want to visit here in Japan. Uh, I fully support the, the national team, the Givas program, and the guys that are there right now. I mean, they have a great group of guys. They're young, they're talented. And for my thing, it's just to be able to represent your country the best way you can is definitely an honor and a privilege. So I totally support it. And you know, if my name is called upon, Whenever they need me, then I would definitely show up. Uh, it just so happened right now that <laughs> dealing with everything that's going on, like I said, it's so hard to travel, it's so hard to leave. I mean, you know, those guys, uh, I definitely would cheer upon those guys. Even uh, Takumi, Takumi is playing for the national team. I definitely support him too. Oh, for sure. The competition level here in the B League is high and they can only get better by playing games here. And hopefully it would translate into playing back in the Philippines and helping out our our country. So these guys are young guys, but they're learning a lot and they're very talented, they're very athletic, they're very skilled. And it's great that they get to see uh, a different sense of basketball being here in Japan. And this is a great opportunity for sure. So to be able to learn and gain wisdom and knowledge from this and bring it back home to help the national team program is definitely a blessing. It's definitely an honor. Uh, I just want to thank the B League for the opportunity, to be honest. Like it's a beautiful country. It's a great culture. It's so rich in that essence. You just want to soak in and take everything in. And, you know, to be at the same time, to be able to play the game that you love, uh, it's a great opportunity for sure. So I love my teammates. I love the coaching staff. Uh, we're definitely very professional in the way we handle things. And we're a team that definitely works hard. We, we have the full support of the management, which we are just, you know, ecstatic and thankful for. And we're trying to build the culture here. And we're headed by uh, Coach Sean. So we definitely trust in his system. We want to continue to grow and build. And, you know, the first step was really to make the playoffs and then go from there because there's a lot of great teams and any team could beat any team in any given night. So that's what I mean by going even into the break. We're still working hard. We're still trying to stay in shape and we're trying to stay sharp, to be honest. So uh, I love being here in the city of Nagoya. Uh, the people are so welcoming, fans, or they treat us like them. We're definitely talented on the offensive side, but really our character and our attitude that uh, we try to bring into each game is just our defense. We work hard. We, we, we try to throw different defenses at the teams and really just try to be the aggressors on the defensive end. Uh, the offense will take care of itself, but when it comes to defense, that's our attitude. Uh, that's our primary thing, that we come in to work hard. Oh, it's tough to say. Like I said, I get along with everybody, and everybody here cares about each other so much. Everything's so genuine. And, you know, we try to stay positive and hold each other accountable. But like I said, uh, Taito, I'm definitely close with. Uh, Cody Clark, I'm close with. Like said, everybody, I'll name everybody in the list. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's the whole team, but yeah, um, that's the thing that that we hold account, we hold each other accountable, and we enjoy working with each other. So it's a good vibe, it's a good atmosphere when we're working hard. Yeah, here, like even with the language barrier, it doesn't matter. We're still trying to hang out and you know have all smiles, but still, at the same time, get the job done.
So we try our best to communicate with each other. Really, like I said, just enjoy the time being here, have the time that we have with them. Oh man, he's young, talented, and has multiple skills, can shoot the three ball, can pull up, can get to the basket and set up his teammates. He's really an all around package. And for me, like, I feel like he's the best guard. And to be honest, like, I see him work hard every day and I'm proud of him for what he's achieving and going to achieve. Like, I know this national team stint, it was just about timing and, you know, he deserves to be there. For me, uh, as I said, he's been working hard and he's talented, for sure. He's he's gifted. We had sushi. He loves sushi. That's one thing I'd say. Like, we'll, we'll have sushi. Uh, we'll eat sushi and, you know, just continue to bond on and off. That's what uh, we try to build here. Not just on the court. Uh, even when you disperse from the court and leave, you try to do something. Oh, I had um, Shabu Shabu with uh, Taito also. So, like, as much as possible, I try to build and try to take the, my teammates out. Basketball. Um, I know Suda loves ramen, but um, we had uh, soba last time. So each week I try to set something up where I try to go out with a specific teammate. I feel like um, those guys are great players, to be honest. I mean, they can do multiple things and I feel like they're, they're very talented. You know, being able to play in a different style in the Philippines and being able to play in a different style here in Japan and to adapt is one key note in your growth as a basketball player. And I said, these guys, they've been around and like I said, they're highly touted, considered the best guards here. And I love playing defense against them, being able to, to compete with them. And they're great competitors too, for sure. Oh, wow, that's, that's tough. Um, well, my last roommate in the PBA bubble was Simon and Cesar. So he's playing in the PBA right now. He's like a, he's like a brother to me. And I would love to see him out here and rock out and do his thing. So I feel like it probably Simon and Cesar. And like I said, I spent so much time with him in the PBA bubble for three months. We're literally like two feet away from each other every day. <laughs> so I would love to see him out here. It would be interesting. Another small guard is uh, Malandre Chauka. Um, he's a good small guard. Reminds me of a Japanese, like I said, a Japanese style player. Like he's quick, he can defend, they can shoot. He can get into the lane and create shots. It's those two guys I would love to see out here. I feel like each and every time I would step out on floor and after games where we circle around, I tend to see different things like fans creating posters or fans sending me something in uh, my on my Instagram. And I really hold it near and dear to my heart. I try my best to respond to everybody. It's just... It's so heartwarming that they accept you and they appreciate the hard work uh, that, that you do each and every day. And just to be able to perform for them and, you know, try to win as much games so they can continue to cheer and they, continue, they can continue to be happy. We really appreciate that. For them to take time out of their busy schedule to buy tickets and just to be able to watch us. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for that. Oh, yeah, I definitely would love to go camping with them. Um, like I said, as of right now, it's just tough because we try to take advantage of each rest day that we can get. And, you know, I feel like with the schedule of coming up this March, we're gonna be busy. It's probably about 11 games in 22 days, or 23 days or something like that. So I'm just trying to save up all my legs to just feel refreshing throughout the process of the break and take advantage of it. And to each his own, everybody has their own way of just coping and just really trying to get their mind off things. Mine's is like movies and I love the water. That's the biggest thing I miss about the Philippines is I miss being by the beach, miss being by the water, just being able to access that. It, it, just listening to the waves, it puts me in a different mind state. First of all, I want to say, you know, thank you so much to everybody that supports not just only the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins, but the whole B League as a whole. So, all the Kababayans there that's supporting all the Filipinos and Asian quota players out there. We really appreciate that. Um, we're here representing not only ourselves, but we're an extension of you guys too. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your unconditional love. We appreciate the time that you, you take out of your busy day to come and just watch us, either whether it may be online or whether it may be live games. We truly appreciate that and we will give our all to, to be in the playoffs and to go to go all the way through. Um, the first step is, like I said, to make the playoffs and we'll definitely go from there. But 
one thing that you guys should know is that we'll definitely give our, our best. So thank you so much. And please take care amidst this pandemic and everything that's going on. Like, stay safe. It will be definitely cool to see him play in the B1 Championship for the first time as Asian quarter player. All right, that's it for today's Meet B League. Please let us know your requests on topics you want us to talk about in the show, especially about some things you want to know about Asian Kuala players. Send us a comment from B League's official social media platforms with hashtag MeetBLG. For our next show, we are going to shine a spotlight on the best player of Indonesia, Brandon Jawato of Utsunomiya Brex. Don't miss it. Till next time. お楽しみに。